Hey everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flare Mouse. We're back again with another test using the fabulous Russian twister slug sent to us by Psycho Clown. The twister is secured to the wad using a screw and the wad is used to stabilize the slug in flight. We had pretty good results using the BRP 12 wad from Ballistic Products. All right, here we go. Performance of this slug is just impressive and you can see why it's one of our favorites. Now this slug was really designed to be shot just out of a smoothbore, but performance out of a rifled barrel was also very impressive. Psycho Clown sent us a lot of these so we were able to try a different wad, a 12 millimeter or half inch tall FS-12. Wow, oh, wow. Out of a smoothbore shotgun, the FS-12 gave us rock steady and accurate performance. Now I don't know how you can improve on that, but let's see how it does through rifling. All right, we're shooting out of a Remington fully rifled barrel. Here we go. Ooh, zap the top. If it weren't for the high speed camera, we never would have known how poorly this slug performs using that FS-12 gas seal through rifling. In this video, we're gonna find out how the twister performs using an even shorter gas seal called the Obturator 12. Now this is only about a quarter inch tall or about six millimeters. Out of all the wads we've used, this one has the thickest area in the middle to drive that screw through, so it should be very secure. But will this short little wad be enough to stabilize that slug? Now what we're trying to do is make a very short self-defense mini shell and that of course allows you to load a lot more shells into a tube magazine when using mini shells it's always important to make sure that whatever shotgun you have that they will cycle reliably i cycle them through a mossberg 500 a 590 and my benelli nova and they seem to be pretty reliable all right enough of me yakking let's get out and test these things out and see how they perform I'm Mike from United Ammo and we are testing out the 534 grain one and a half inch tall twister ammunition out of a 12 gauge Winchester SXP. We're ready to do this. And we're, you are the new guest shooter. We've never had you before and I, I found you in a gun shop and asked you if you wanted to, hey, you want to film a video with me? Sure, you know. Absolutely. A lot of people don't want to be on camera and I appreciate you being out here to yeah, help us out. Not a problem at all something i want to do and i'm going to enjoy every minute of this <laughs> all right we're going to shoot at a really big water jug on the table there we're at about 15 yards i think yeah, right Six, 15 17 yards. yards it's it's under 20 yards a little close nice big target see where they land We used 25 grains of long shot giving us 1,451 feet per second in this shot. Unfortunately, stability and accuracy were just awful. Now, even though the slug just kind of hit the corner of it, the hydrostatic energy still blew that jug into pieces. It's a real testament to how powerful that slug is. Now the image quality of this shot is horrible. I recently did a software update on the camera and it created a lot of problems like this. I just installed an older version of the software and I hope that'll fix it in the future. 1529, a little variation there. 1529. Now in this shot, the slug is a lot more stable. The accuracy was still, eh, pretty bad especially for only 15 yards. Despite all that, the damage to the watermelon was still really impressive. Normally a shot like that with a regular shotgun slug would just blow a little chunk out the side, but this one sent the energy through the whole watermelon still. Last two shots, we're aiming here, they're hitting low and to the right. So this time around, we're going to aim high into the left. Okay. Hopefully get a uh, shot right around here somewhere. Let's, let's try it out of another smoothbore. This is Danny's old Mossberg 500. And um, it's got a little better optics on it. Maybe you'll have better luck. If it still shoots kind of wonky, that we, we know it's not the gun. We know it's not the shooter. It's probably the ammo.
In this shot he landed a lot closer to his point of aim and that slug just vaporized that jug of water. To rule out any uh, shooter error here, we're going to go ahead and use a full-size factory slug from Federal. Yeah, even factory ammo will fly a little bit wonky sometimes, as you can see here. But it looks like the shooter and the gun are in pretty good working order. All right, at, at 15 yards, these things were doing pretty bad. But they're, they're designed for defense range, which is 10 yards or less, 30 feet or less. So we're going to set, we set the jug at exactly 10 yards and see if we get some better accuracy this way. Well again, the slug is not too stable, but luckily by the time it hit 10 yards, it was kind of pointed nose first. And Zach managed to land pretty close to the dot. And once again, I am cringing at the image quality of this shot. I apologize for that. Sometimes you just gotta deal with what you got. The alternative was to trash this entire project and no one would have seen it. That was a lot more accurate. It, it was just about an inch low. And that's the back side of it? Yeah, that's the back side. A few pedals made it out. You can see a few right there. So we did have fragmentation, so it must have hit nose first. Definitely a big improvement just moving the target five yards closer. Definitely. To defense range. Yep. All right. That's, that, it's starting to look a little promising. All right. We're going to shoot this uh, slug out of a rifle barrel now and see what that does for our accuracy. See if we have better stability or anything, anything better. Anything better than this. Because rifling makes everything better. Okay, I'm ready. That lid. Hey, I, I don't think that was any better than the smoothbore. No. The accuracy wise, this shot to the right, elevation was good. Uh, any fragments coming out of the back? Yes, sir. A couple of them. Okay. One here, one here. It looks like there may have been one through there that caused the tear. And everything is just history. Okay. okay so it, it hit dead on too. No advantage using rifling for sure. Well, I may have spoken too soon. We did have better stability using rifling in this case. The accuracy was, well, it was okay. It wasn't great. And the amount of damage to the jug was pretty much the same as using a smoothbore. Now ideally we're looking for something that performs equally well through both a smoothbore shotgun and also through a rifle shotgun. And it seems like the happy medium here is using that BRP 12 wad from Ballistic Products. While it's not a mini shell, it is a little shorter than a factory birdshot shell. Now I'm not completely ruling out the mini shell idea with the right powder load and there were enough testing, it would probably work a lot better. It's pretty rare that my powder loads are right the first time. And it looked really promising in this test from a few weeks ago with Officer Greg. And this is 20 yards using full rifling. Now in this test, the stability through full rifling wasn't great, but accuracy wise, it wasn't bad. Elevation was a little low, that could be adjusted, but it definitely looked hopeful at that time. But in my opinion, the best wad we have tested so far is that green BRP-12 wad. And these are all shots that Danny took about a year and a half ago. And it really didn't matter if we shot it through a smoothbore or through full rifling. The results were just pretty spectacular either way. Now the worst one we tested was this field wad, normally used to hold birdshot as the pedals trimmed off. And we had nothing but trouble with this thing. Now in every single shot that Danny took, the wad came apart. There just wasn't enough meat for that screw to 
grab onto. Now this is 100 yards that Danny's shooting and somehow he managed to hit the mannequin one time despite the failures. Now even though the mini shell wasn't perfect, it was definitely a lot better than this setup. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.